I'm 24, female, and this happened at my old job. My mom decided that I needed a job, one that wouldn't cause so much stress, interfere with school, and could keep me out of trouble on the weekends. So I elected to babysit for the neighbors, cousins, and other families around my neighborhood. I was 17. I had a good time with kids and it was the easiest way to make money. Just seeing the kids face light up when they would see me made the job that more enjoyable. But the last group of kids I babysat were weird. I would watch them for days a week. I would help them with their homework and make sure that they were fed and fast asleep by 7 o'clock at night. Things were great for the first few months, but I began to feel like they were imagining things or something which is when things got weird. Marissa was the oldest. She was eight. Larry was in the middle. He was six. And Alexis was the baby. She was three. I can recall one particular night when I was swamped with homework. The kids were watching TV in the living room. While I was sitting at the kitchen table, math wasn't the easiest subject for me. So it took me more time to concentrate on being too focused on something else while babysitting isn't a good thing. A while had passed until I realized that the house was strangely quiet. I looked up from the table to see the kids sitting on the kitchen floor looking up at me with those sweet eyes. What are you doing? I asked. Um, waiting to go home? Marissa smiled. You're already home, silly. No, we live with you. I'm the only babysitter, sweetie. I watch over you when your mom and dad need a night for themselves. I laughed. But Jackson said that you are our mom. You gave us to these new parents because you had to. Who is Jackson? I questioned. The man in my closet, she responded. How long has this man been in your closet? I don't know, but he says that you're pretty and kind. You have quite the imagination, Marissa. I chuckled. A sinking feeling of dread settled over me when I heard the floorboards overhead creaking because of someone walking around. The heavy footsteps frightened Larry and Alexis. They tightly hugged my legs while Marissa looked up at the ceiling. Jackson's here! Jackson's here! She clapped. I have never jumped out of my chair faster than I had at that moment. I scooped up the kids in my arms and I rushed them to the front porch. I need you to go to Mr. Hugh's house and get help, but we want to stay here with you. Just go! I pushed her. They didn't really understand why I was being so frantic, but Marissa nodded before grabbing her brother and sister's hand. I watched them run off off the porch and across the yard before I stepped inside the house to face whatever pervert was in the child's bedroom. I grabbed a knife from the kitchen sink, slowly crept up the stairs and stood outside of Marissa's room. I gently pressed my ear against the door. Muffled noises met my line of hearing, which caused me to swing the door open. Marissa's window was open. The cool breeze drifted into the room, caused alarm bells to go off. I know for a fact the window was closed prior to putting those kids in front of the TV. The dresser drawers were open, clothes strewn across the floor, and toys scattered on the bed. My hand searched the wall until I felt the light switch. I flicked the light on to see the man sitting in the closet, his back against the wall, his belt undone, and a toothless grin greeting me. You're even prettier in person. My chest felt like it was tightening. I struggled to take a breath but the sound of sirens filled me with relief. The man jumped up from the floor, knocked me into the wall and ran out of the bedroom. I sank to the floor and let the tears go. The kids made it to the neighbor's house and banged on the door until Mr. Hughes answered. He was alarmed when he saw the bedroom light illuminate the backyard, so he called 911. Mrs. Hughes sat in the dining room with Marissa, Larry, and Alexis until the police arrived. The man hiding in the closet had apparently been living there for a few weeks. He was in his 40s, strung out on heroin and homeless. I don't know what happened to him, but that ended my babysitting career. My advice to anyone who might babysit in the future, 
please check the house before you get too comfortable. You never know what is going to happen. Two boys and one girl. Their mom knew me as the oldest child, was friends with my little brother, and asked my mom if I could help out just with some babysitting since she started out taking more shifts and her husband did as well. They lived right next to my high school and paid well, so I agreed despite not really having that much experience. I realized rather quickly it was going to be difficult, but the kids were great. I was just nervous around them. The oldest one was fine, just played on his Xbox most of the time or did homework. But the two youngest were a different story. The daughter, which was the middle child, was completely obsessed with horror movies. And on more than one occasion, I had to hide the knives from her since so she wanted to reenact them. The youngest seemed to follow suit and try to set the Christmas tree on fire. I knew what kids can be like since I have a lot of younger and older cousins, but these kids drove me insane and I would constantly worry about them hurting themselves or each other. If they played up, I would threaten to call their mom, which normally would work. It was after a few months that I realized if I had mentioned the dad, that's when they would really just behave, so that's what I started doing. Now, I never really met the dad, I just knew the guy was really tall and built but was always described to me as still being really nice, so I never thought anything about it. Now on this occasion, I had said to the youngest boy that I would call his dad if he didn't stop behaving badly, which resulted in a huge tantrum, so I ended up calling him and explaining. Luckily for me, the dad was getting off work early, so he said that he would get home as soon as he could and apologize for the kid's behavior. When I explained this, the kid was sobbing and ended up locking himself in his room. That day, the dad got home and they weren't joking when they said he was tall. I'm only 5'3 and was 15 at the time. When I saw him having to crouch a little to get through the door because of his size, I remember thinking, oh crap, no wonder the kids won't misbehave when he's there. I said hi and apologized for the work call, while well, she just brushed off and said that it had to be done and not to worry. We were both sitting on the couch, I can't remember why, but I think we were talking about what days they needed me for. Now, at this stage, the two youngest went outside to play while I was in with the oldest as I had just been tidying up a little from dinner. I was pretty weirded out because his oldest started to get pretty angsty when asked to go to the shop. He kept making excuses to his dad, so I just offered to go. I could see the dad visibly frustrated and just wanted to defuse the situation. Now, I would like to point out that everything seemed normal at this point, but I remember feeling really intimidated by the dad. I'd only met him this one time and spoke for no more than 20 minutes. It turns out that the oldest has said to his mom that he didn't want me left alone with his dad as he had apparently been watching me a little too closely during our short encounter. The parents had asked me to babysit later on in that week, which I had agreed to, however, in the space of a few days, that quickly changed. I got a text from the mom apologizing for the last minute arrangements but saying I couldn't babysit. I was a little agitated since I had changed plans, but wasn't too bothered and just said it was fine and just let me know when she needs me. She asked me to come around to get my pay for the last two weeks and I decided to just stick around before going home. As soon as I was in the house, I could tell something was off, but I wasn't trying to pry. I just went in to say hi, talked about some books for a little bit and left. It wasn't until a week later or so where everything seemingly kicked off. I came home to my mom being upset and angry, pacing the living room while my stepdad was trying to calm her down. I immediately went to her asking what was wrong, feeling a little worried. Instantly, she just threw her arms around me and started crying and holding me. I had meant to be babysitting but again got cancelled so I was home earlier than what I said I would be originally. Pulling away confused, I asked her what was wrong again. It turns out, my mom had been trying to get a hold of me but my phone had died. I had gone to babysit and nobody was home so I decided to head back on the bus but wasn't able to let my mom know. She sits me down and starts trying to ask me questions about the dad and my time babysitting. Confused, I mentioned that I only met him once and only really spoke to him on the phone a handful of times when the kids were acting up. Nodding, my mom started pressing on and asked if anything else had happened and kept questioning me saying I could tell her anything. I just looked at her, still confused, and told her that nothing happened and asked what this all was about. I always remember her taking a deep breath and saying, oh thank god, before letting me know what happened. 
Now, as I said, the details are vague because this was on the news. Turns out, the guy had killed someone while working and been taken in by the police. During interrogation, it turns out that he admitted to beating his wife and there were speculations of assaults. It was also mentioned that one of his types were petite girls that had dark hair and were pale, which happened to match my description at the time, and my mom was terrified in case something had happened. I'm turning 23 this year, and it still gives me shivers. I remember feeling like I was going to throw up and had a sinking feeling in my stomach. My mom held me close, crying because she had been worried all day and scared in case something had happened. Needless to say, I stopped babysitting for the family right then and there. I had felt so awful for the wife, as she was honestly one of the nicest women I had ever met. About a week later, I got a text from her, as it turns out, I had left some books there. So I had said I would stop by again and get them. When I saw her, my heart sank. She had obviously not slept and was putting on a brave face for her kids who weren't really sure what was going on. We ended up sitting in the kitchen and I gave her a hug, just trying to comfort her. I had mentioned that if she needed help with the kids since he was gone, I would try and help again. But she immediately refuses as it turned out people had started attacking the house. She gave me my stuff paid for the wages with a little more added, and she said she appreciated it, but it would be better off if I just took a step back from the family, as she didn't want me getting hurt for being associated with them. To this day, I still think about them, and it still scares me after thinking about what could have happened. I still talk to the younger kids, who are a lot older, and even help tutor the younger girl. I helped the oldest when he started high school because I noticed the kids bullying him for what his dad done which was awful considering it wasn't the fault of the family. But yeah, this happened and let's not meet again, you psychopath. Before I get into it, I have had many other experiences, but this one freaked me out more than the others and has always stayed with me. Now, this happened around five years ago, around Christmas time when I was still in high school. My mother had gone to a Christmas party and I was babysitting my three younger siblings. We lived in a small house, my two sisters sharing a room, my brother sharing a room with my mother, and myself in my own room. My brother had already fallen asleep in my room and my youngest sister went to bed around the same time, which left my middle sister up with me watching a movie in the living room. My middle sister was tired and went to bed before the movie ended. And after the movie was over, I cleaned up the living room and went to the bathroom to get ready for bed. As I was brushing my teeth, I heard my middle sister clear as day whisper my name. I peeked my head out of the bathroom, which was in the middle of our rooms, to see her, but she wasn't in the hallway. I continued brushing my teeth and then walked to the girl's room and quietly asked her what she needed. She didn't answer, so I walked closer to her bunk bed and poked my middle sister to ask what she wanted to talk about, but all she did was roll over in her sleep. Thinking I was just hearing things, I went back to the bathroom to finish the nighttime routine. Minutes later, it sounded like a toddler running across the hardwood floors. I looked out into the living room and could see our ottoman rolling from one side of the room to another. At this point, I'm freaking out and calling my mom asking her when she'd be getting home and telling her what's been happening. As soon as I got off the phone with her, it sounded like boxes in our attic had toppled over and that someone was running from the far side of the attic to the side of the house I was at and then stopping abruptly. I called my mom again and told her she needed to get home as soon as possible. While waiting for her to get home, I turned every light in the house on besides where the kids were sleeping. I waited on the couch in the living room until she got home, and when she did, she checked the entire house, including the attic, and saw that a few boxes had fell. Not a person or an animal, nothing. I remember her asking me if I was okay, and all I could say back was, It has never said my name before. 